All right, guys, tip number one for annihilating our aquatic friends here that you see in the background of this replayer. When you have the nuts on the river, go for giant sizing for value, especially if your opponent can have a lot of really strong absolute hand strength hands. So in this hand, we have the queen nine of clubs in the cutoff. We open filling calls in the big blind. And donk bets a flop of jack eight ace rainbow. This is obviously ridiculous and absurd and basically identifies the opponent as a fish right away. Am I still allowed to say fish? Do I have to say wreck player? Do I have to say fun player? Do I have to say nice guy that's just having a good time and probably has a really high paying job as a high flying lawyer? Do I have to say that? Am I like the grandfather sat in the armchair in a nappy slash diaper? Like just saying unacceptable things? Am I that much of a boomer or can I still say fish? Let me know in the comments where we are with that one. How politically correct do we need to be? Got a call here. I think raise is all right, but let's just stick with call for now. I think it's a bit of a better line. Seven of hearts on the turn, villain bit small again. This is not meant to be the most polarized action in theory. It's obviously meant to be full of thin value and some bluffs and it's meant to have some level of polarization to it. And I think in practice, the main thing that's different here is that the fish just has almost anything that's related to the board. So they could have a gut shot, they could have one pair, they could have two pair. I think there'll be very little two pair plus in here. They're mostly just going to have like ace four, jack nine, pocket nines, ten eight, all this kind of nonsense, king eight. Random hands that really shouldn't ever do this in equilibrium. So I opt to actually raise here and just start to quote unquote apply pressure to this range that's like got many call folds in it, meaning they can call turn fold river or maybe just fold immediately. So I think following through as a bluff against most fish on the river here is going to be quite good. This river card, not so much because it does bring, gives us a straight. Obviously, we don't have the decision of bluffing anymore, but it does bring lots of very strong absolute hand strength hands. Villain now has way more two pair, some sets, lots of straights, that kind of thing. So even though we block a nine, like we don't, we don't care about that, guys. Villain still has a bunch of nine X. Let's go for all of the marbles here. Remember this truism with me. Say it with me. Magnitude trumps frequency in poker. Magnitude trumps frequency. The idea is that you can bet twice the pot, you can bet 200% of the pot here, but you can never be called 200% of the time. So the amount you can actually win, especially when you run into what we call inelastic ranges, imagine you try and bend a pencil and it just snaps, right? It's inelastic. It doesn't stretch and contract with the pressure. It just doesn't move or suddenly it breaks. And that's usually what fish ranges are like, that they're just not reacting to sizing enough of the time. Many fish here, like when they just have two pair or they just have a straight, they're just not going to want to fold. Your brain's going to trick you. It's going to want a reward. It's going to want that dopamine hit. And it might even say, hey, just bet smaller because you'll get that good feeling, that dopamine hit more often. We're such slaves to our neural wiring. We really are. But it's fooling us here because the brain doesn't really register emotionally the difference between winning 2x pot and 1x pot. So it might have you bet less than the pot so you can feel good because it doesn't actually feel twice as good to win 2x pot here than it is to win a pot size bet. It just feels good in either case. But it is twice as good and know your opponent's not reacting enough to this, this change in sizing. So definitely jam this river. Tip number two as illustrated by the following hand is don't pay any respect to small random fish actions. Just call when the pot odds are enticing. So this is a hand that starts off kind of standard. It actually looks a bit like we're against the reg here from the line that's being taken. Three bet to 11 big blinds. We call king, king, queen, small range bet type thing. This could be like some kind of semi reg that's like, learn something about betting small in the flop, but it's still basically a fish at heart because the way they've played this hand here is so, so abysmal and abominable that there's certainly a weaker player. Notice that we've got anonymous screen names here. We wouldn't want to actually expose you guys and insult you like that in public. But if you're watching this and this is you and you know who you are, shame on you. You don't deserve to play the game, but I'm glad that you were playing it on this one day. So anyway, we call the flop bet. The turn goes third pot again. We call and yeah, this is the spot where if you're against a good player here, 
they're supposed to be value betting really just queen x ace queen plus something like that i would think for the sizing i don't think they get the value bet like a lower pocket pair than this here i wouldn't imagine so but this was just a recreational player clicking buttons and when you see this what you really have to understand is that you're not just bluff catching anymore we use this term bluff catcher a lot in our theory course the carrot poker school and it's really important to know what that means we have a bluff catcher if and only if our hand beats every single bluff in our opponent's range, but doesn't chop or win against any value bet. If it's possible, Velen could also have queen jack suited here, so maybe this is verging on like value chopper or something, but I don't really think so. I think this is probably supposed to be a theoretical bluff catcher, but in the real world, it's not. It's actually a, a merge beater, and a merge beater is a hand that will just run into some random spew, like the pocket potatoes that the opponent showed up with here, that's what we call tens on this channel. If you didn't know that, where have you been? So we run into the potatoes here, but we could also have ran into like pocket sixes or pocket nines or pocket eights or anything like that. Just a bunch of random spew. Who knows? Maybe just a bunch of ace high as well. Fish don't necessarily understand how big they're betting in relation to the pot. They're just clicking buttons. They're clicking like X pot. Oh, that looks like a lot of chips. I'm going to put that in. They're not really thinking about anything a lot of the time. So when you're getting four to one and you need 20% equity to call, 4.03 to 1 to be precise you should call and you shouldn't level yourself here yes you're going to lose here a bunch and it does feel like you're getting value down by pocket aces or ace queen but even though that will happen a lot of the time you're going to win so much more often than 20 percent of the time here that to fold would really be to level yourself into the ground it would be really just a play that decimates your win rate completely don't pay any respect to these small random fish lines they're going to be all over the place and please whatever you do don't commit the mistake that I often hear people commit on a Discord server when they're getting their hands reviewed and say, this should be a polarized action. It's like you're against a fish, mate. It's not going to be polarized. It's going to have random hands in it. Many fish don't understand the basic premise of polarization, that when they bet where they didn't have to on the river, they need to not have the most medium hand ever. They don't understand that, and that's why they're going to show up here with a hand like pocket tens. Okay, final hand. When you're playing against really bad poker players, like big stations or whales or whatever you want to call them, go for very thin value. Get super greedy. So this hand feels thin if you're like a GTO guy that you've studied a lot of GTO wizard or something and you're mainly used to making decisions based on what you think a solver would do and you're trying to mimic the solver because you have basically, it's equivalent of being like raised by wolves or something, like you have just had the, the wrong upbringing and you're going to really struggle to survive in like normal poker society, you're, you're going to be like howling in job interviews and stuff like that instead of just answering the questions. So in the same way that being raised by wolves doesn't put you in a very good um place in life to to be successful and it's going to be an uphill struggle learning just from the solver without any street smarts without talking to any more experienced players is also going to put you in a really disadvantageous sort of myopic blind situation as a poker player so if you know what real ranges are like then you'll know that when you have a, a really bad player this guy was terrible like playing really really instantly clicking very high vpip just playing very bad poker. Again, the half pot donk on the flop that seems to be the fish trademark for today. We go ahead and call with middle pair. Very thrilled here, obviously. This could be a lot of random stuff. Same on the turn, the kind of small, mergy, silly bet. There's no doubt going to be a polarization error. Like a lot of the time, this is going to be jack five or 10 eight or pocket nines or I don't know, some random hand that just shouldn't be playing in this way. King four or something. Like it's going to be lots of stuff like that. So we just immediately go for the raise here funnel money into the middle because when you're against a merged range that's not actually sufficiently polar the right exploit is just to attack for value aggressively and go thinner because they have more second best hands pair plus draws medium equity stuff that you're crushing that can call so that's a really big exploit don't call here because you're like well when the solver double dunk bets here it's meant to be really polarized like yeah sure but this isn't a solver it's a random dude so we go ahead and call here we go ahead and raise here and villain calls and the river is the seven of spades and in this spot I've definitely seen people shut down because they're like, well, the flush got there. That's a big part of his range. We lose to sets and straights already. This feels too thin. I'm just going to check back. But what you have to remember is that this guy has probably led the flop with all kinds of Jack X and 10 X and Queen X. He's only got 21 big blinds left. He probably doesn't care that much about folding in this situation. So all of the hands that are 
absolutely trivial folds in GTO, like Villain's actual combo here, the Jack-8, if we can be a bit results-oriented for a second, are going to be called at a decent frequency in real life. So as soon as you take that solver output and you say, no, 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 Pio, Jack-9 is here all the time, not just occasionally, and it's calling 70% of the time on the river or whatever, like a tilted fish that's down to the last 20 big lines is going to call off with here, you're left with a really clear value jam. So yeah, you feel a bit silly when you run into a flush here. You're like, oh, I could have just checked back and saved that money and your brain is going to, it's going to dupe you again. It's going to trick you into thinking you did something wrong when you run into a flush here. The thing is that flushes are very often just going to jam the river at this SPR. When villains chased all the way down here with some flush draw and then gets to the river and binks it and there's only half pot left, they're going to just stick it in. They don't care enough about initiative to slow play there a large amount of the time. So many, many fish are just always jamming their flush here. So I think our equity is like easily 80 something percent here. And when you have 80% against the station, you probably still have 66% when called. I think I'm probably like a 65% favorite, 70% favorite when called here. And that would be a travesty not to shove. Do go for thinner value against weaker players. That is it for this Tuesday edition short video. We have another couple of these coming out before the Christmas break, at which point we're going to be dropping down to just one video a week. For a little while, I'm going to take it easy, take some much-deserved time off. I've been ranting a lot about poker to you guys, and I could do with a little break. But yeah, I hope you're all doing well. If you want more from us, it's carrotcorner.com. And of course, tomorrow is Wednesday. There'll be another full-length video out. I've got another high-stakes video in the making. I'm, I'm talking with one of my one of my guys that's taken the carrot poker school that plays high stakes and he wants to like come on and review some high stakes hands, which I think will be really fun. So more of that to look forward to. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Let us know what you think about this one. I'll see you soon.